Hello, welcome to Crow Hong Kong the fourth online public workshop. This workshop will demonstrate how to make the advanced streams in Crow. So this workshop we will divide it into two parts. The first part will demonstrate how to create a border patch as well as custom sequence. And then after 10 minutes break, we'll go over to uh, the part two which are uh, Polly will um, demonstrate how to create pom pom and fur trims as well as the star piece with logos. So here we start. First, please go to uh, open to your Chrome software and you will see the Chrome interface. Um, we have already shared the part one material to you. So please download it into your desktop and uh, add the file path at your library in Chrome. So you should be able to, just like as now, what I'm showcased to you here, you already uh, add the file path, part one material, inside library. So when you double click, you should be able to see there are also two subfolders, one named uh, first part, uh, A, and body patch, and then the other one is B, sequence. So please open and body patch, and please now, uh, please double click Christmas scarf C, uh, C project files. Please double click it. So already you got uh, the pmate scarf uh, on inside clothes. So this uh, exercise we will demonstrate how to add the embroidery patches of this ginger batman um, onto the scarf. So in real life, of course, we will already got the embroidered patch um, so you could able to sew it onto the scarf. But how about in Chrome? So uh, same, you're using your uh, physical uh, patch, uh, embroidered patch. You scan it or take photos of it and then create a digital image of this uh, embroidered patch. So in the exercise, uh, in this folder, we already providing you a Ginger Batman uh, image file, which is named texture underscore Ginger Batman dot PNG. So um, you might notice the format is not in JPEG, uh, but rather in PNG. It's because uh, this image is to make sure the background is in transparent so that it can, uh, when you add into Chrome, you will not, know, uh, you will not see the uh, white or black backgrounds, uh, but rather you can see the total outlines uh, of these shapes of the embroidered patch. But so uh, you may, uh, so you can foresee that uh, after you scan it or uh, take photos of the patch, you may need to add it these uh, graphics in Photoshop beforehand. So uh, I just quickly showcase to you in the Photoshop right now. Uh, I already added the uh, already pre uh, pre treat this uh, image and to make sure that these backgrounds is in transparent. So you can see those uh, backgrounds is in the gridded form and just only showcasing the outlines of these gingerbread. Then you can now you can save the files as the PNG, make sure it's in PNG. So of course now because I already saved the texture image beforehand, so I don't I won't I won't go further of this. But besides that, uh, go back to the clothes uh, folders. You may also notice there are an, there is another image file called displacement underscore ginger batman. This time it's JPEG file. This is a uh, additional or uh, map. Or we call it displacement map. Uh, is to create the, the those graphics specific area that is um, have the pumpiness effects which makes it 3D looks like in 3D uh, window. So um, those uh, displacement map, they uh, first you may notice this is uh, black and white graphics, monochrome colors. Uh, 
For the white area and black area is indicating something specifically in 3D. So again, just let's go. Let me go back to the Photoshop's and using these um, uh, backgrounds, using the same image, this gingerbread texture image. Um, whatever you can, uh, using select tools uh, to select those specific area that you want to create a pumpiness. Uh, for this uh, time, I will use, let's say, Magic Ward or uh, maybe so select by color range or this different color selections to create those, uh, to select those areas that you want to exclude it out as um, the pumpy uh, area. So um, this time I already um, create, selected those areas which including the outlines, the uh, gingerbread man out, uh, shapes that with stitching, the overlock stitching. And then those uh, stitching uh, whatever on this uh, Junior Batman's eyes, mouth, uh, mouth, and all those details. I would make it into a white, um, white color. And then um, I just mixed it uh, extra, maybe adding the uh, clipping mask or the extra layers of backgrounds into black color. So in this time, um, now I retreated this in graph image uh, with these monochrome colors. So the white area, as I mentioned, those white areas will indicating the pumping areas, the popping up areas, and then the black one, those black areas will be appearing flat, which is no pumpiness at all. Okay, so before we export as the JPEGs for displacement map, we need to add an extra fun, uh, extra effect, which need to add the filter. Uh, but first, uh, let me Merge the uh, merge layers into a single layer file, and then turn it into the or maybe in the smart objects or flatten image. So and now I can I need to apply the blur filter. Um, I would we will suggest you recommend you to use Gaussian blur these uh, filter because. In order to uh to make the blur to make the outline edge smoother and appears in 3D window to create this very smooth uh outlines. Whatever you're using two or five or three, or so um let's now let's do it with three. Say okay. Then now you got the displacement map, but uh, of course you need now need to save as um uh, JPEG. Files because uh, same I already providing you the displacement map, so I won't do it. Uh, I won't save really save here. Um, now uh, we if, if we want to uh we got the image and we got the displacement map, so now we can officially start to uh, create a patch uh for the gingerbags. Man, but first we need to make the patterns for this for this patches. Same uh, in Chrome, we need to using the patterns representing extra uh, layers of the physical uh, form of the patch. So um, same, I already given to you the patterns for the Ginger Batman, which is in CP uh, ZPAC. Um, just simply add into workspace, right click. Then you now got whatever you showcase in 3D and 2D window. You got these uh, gingerbread patterns. Uh, but of course, uh, if you uh, if you want to, if you have an other custom shapes of the patch patterns, you uh, same you can utilize those uh, pattern tools such as uh, polygon or um, 
square different shapes to create a pattern first and then using uh, the uh, internal line to uh, trace out the outlines of the patterns of, of your uh, embroidered patch and then cut it. So uh, this is just for time wise I prepare for you in advance. So make sure that the outline is cleaned it and with all those closed uh, outlines. So uh, now let's focus on these patch, this pat, uh, pattern for patch. And now we can apply the texture image on it. Um, at the same time, you can go to whatever in library, uh, select the image of the texture image. Please make sure it's the texture image. And then right click add as graphic. So um, I recommend you to move to 2D windows and then just click appoint the Ginger Batman's patterns. So for size, we won't uh, make any adjustment at this stage. We just simply click OK. Um, even though you see in 2D window, the uh, image just looks much bigger than the uh, patterns itself. But no worries, we can adjust later on. But uh, and then we now need to focus instantly onto the uh, property editor. So you go down to the right hand, right bottom hand corner, you see the property editor. Uh, once we add the graphics as a texture image on the pattern, you will see in the instantly the basic, under basic parameters, texture already given to the ginger bat image. So now we can adjust uh, accordingly about the normal map. Uh, we can utilize, we click the arrows, the triangle, next to it and then adjust its intensity adjust its intensity to let's say 50 and then we go into displacement map so because we already prepared the displacement map for you so you can simply go to the library using our drag and drop functions to uh, apply the displacement map drag and drop or you can also utilize the uh, open path to open the file path uh, where you uh, got the displacement map and then click to open. Same, they both the same. Okay, so once we add the displacement map, we can adjust the, its parameter accordingly uh, as the below list. For the amount, uh, according to the handouts, I already Yes, uh, which is amount is one, um, and then shift is zero, clipping is zero, particle distance um, you may adjust to or two or even less, and make sure to keep continuously. So let's do it now in here, and for the color we don't need to change because the image already. Uh, providing to you. So now we can uh, utilize the uh, click the graphics in 2D window using your mouse uh, left click your graphics and you will see this compass uh, of adjusting the, uh, to transform the graphic. You can press the shift key try to uh, scale down the, the texture image uh, size in order to align the um, pattern outlines. Seems need to be a slightly smaller until you don't see any uh, gaps between or even smaller, a tiny smaller. Uh, until you don't see any white gaps uh, in between the graphics and the pattern outlines. So now you can able to um, see these patches is now adding with graphics. But now on, even though we got 
the uh, patch with the front image applied, but when you turn in 3D window, turn to the back side of these patterns, you will see it still appear in white even. If you show, uh, if you in 3D window showcasing the, the thick texture survey display, uh, which represent the thickness of the fabric of the patterns, you was you still able to see the uh, the thickness edge is still in white color because for this pattern, once we are we are we add in the pattern, we haven't assigned any fabrics. Uh, of course, if the uh, the assigned fabric type would be just default one. Um, but now, uh, since we got the image and the displacement map normal map applied it, now we can adjust the pattern itself with the correct fabric. So now let's go to object browser. Um, now because I click in the pattern, whatever you click in 3D or 2D window, uh, the um, indicating using uh, fabric type is will be highlighted in blue. So you see now the fabric one, which is uh, currently applying onto these uh, patch patterns. So you click in the fabric one. Um, now we need to adjust the fabric properties, whatever is texture. So we now uh, we can uh, first we need to rename it so you can distinguish these fabric types. So I type it and border patch and border patch and then go down to the property editor going down to uh, fabric type. Now we still are uh, utilizing fabric matte and to texture. Um, now uh, since I also given to you uh, the JPEG file of the texture image of felt wool. Felt wool. You may simply select the felt wool, drag and drop into texture column on uh, the row. Of course, you also can utilize the open icon, the open file path icon to select the felt wool image to open it for texture. So same, I'll go down to normal map. We can, you can uh, auto generate by the adjusting its intensity. Now let's say uh, 50. Uh, in the handout, I also give them to you. So please just follow the handout settings. So let's uh, jump directly into, because this is just fabric, I, we don't add in this placement map. And go down to color. Now, because this um, currently the pie texture image is still very not matching the embroidery patch front color. So uh, either you can uh, let's make it the saturation off. So to make it like a very white color, desaturate it, and then. Now let's go to color, click the color chips, and then use the eye drop black to copy these color. These color of the front patches, the brown color, copy this, and then you can you may add in you are uh, pressing add so that you can save this color palette. This uh copy the color palette into this uh, into the uh, palette library and then click OK. So you may see now the uh, the back size, whatever the texture or even the color is matching to the front. It's matching to the front. And now let's go down to the physical properties. Let's jump into the physical properties. Under presets, please click the uh, drop down menu, you will see all those uh, presets, physical properties of the fabric types. And please select it wool, wool, wool. So um, now if this patches has the properties of the wool, um, uh, physical properties. 
So in 3D now, it looks more uh, reasonable uh, as a patch itself. So uh, let's go like this. And now, since it just set, uh, is the settings for these patches, we haven't attached it onto the scarf. So this time, uh, just uh, in 2D, I just slightly change the position of the placement of these uh, two uh, patches, patterns. And now we need to uh, sew it onto the scarf. Um, how? So before we sew it, we need to create internal shapes onto the scalp so it's like um, the sewing path when you apply the sewing tool. Please now click still selecting in 2D window. I will just focus on 2D window first and then right click upon the selected. Please click to select the patterns, the patch pattern first and then right click upon it. Now Please select clone as internal shape. Clone as internal shape. So when you click it, you will see the uh, yellow outlines, transparent kind of light, is um, maneuvering of uh, while your mouse maneuvering, uh, rolling your mouse with the arrow dot line. So you can uh, freely decide which uh, position of these internal shapes place it on this scarf. Um, I will just show selecting the uh, right bottom corner. Right bottom corner. So I'll just change, I just let me quickly change to monochrome surface so you can able to see these internal shapes I already apply on this scarf. Okay, but of course you can still um, not, not follow me to change it. Okay, now we already got the internal shapes on the scalp. Now uh, this indicating sewing path which between the patches and the scalp. Okay, so please now go to free sewing. We use free sewing too. Simple free sewing too. Um, please remember always start with the shorter length first. So in this case, I will sew, I will turn it all around to sew the um, patches outline first. And then remember, uh, uh, you need to start with the accord, uh, according to corresponding positions of, on the internal shapes that's on this scalp. So same, turning all around. I show it like a clockwise. So please double click, uh, not double click, but just simply click it. Then you in 3D window, you should be able to see the sewing lines is in the, uh, instantly formed it. Okay. And now let's uh, go to focus on 3D window. Please change the select and move to instead of sewing to. Please click the select and move to so that you can now select the gingerbread mat, uh, the gingerbread patterns in 3D window, like what I'm doing right now. I select it. I select the pattern in 3D window. So you see the gizmo. But instead of using gizmo to move uh, to the areas that on the scarf, Rather, we were using the function. Please appoint the selection right click. The drop down uh, menu, you will have superimpose fun um, over. Superimpose over. Please click it. So, just one simple click, you can automatically place these um, patches onto the soldered area of the scarf. Okay. You got it sticking onto the scarf. So you can zoom it to see right now. 
And now we can go to uh, finally how to see the pumpiness effects that we set through the displacement map. Now please go to render window, which is at the top bar menu. You see the uh, the line column called render. Please click render underneath render. And then you instantly got your render window opened. Um, before we really interact uh, uh, interact the render engine, please make sure go to uh, the um, render properties and then under property editor, which somehow showcasing the render engine with uh, properties information. Please make sure if you're using the graphic cast that is Navita, which is quote recommended, please use GPU CUDA. GPU CUDA as your render engine. If you are not using Navita, but rather but other graphic cards such as the MacBooks um, crystal graphic cards, then please change to CPU for render engine. Um, so this is just one uh, kind of reminder for you guys. And then um, we can go back to the um, to click the interactive render now. Please click interactive render. Give them some time so the render window will now start to calculating and rendering slightly slowly. So now you will see under render window, those are uh, when the time you create the displacement map, those white area indicating the pumpiness, now um, showcasing the, the 3D look. But of course, you can always click the image back while using uh, edit a uh, transform pack graphic two. Click tra uh, using transform graphic two in 3D window. Click the graphics, and then you can always adjust its uh, amount of the pumpiness to make it more pumpy or even lower the particle distance to make it more fine details resolutions. Remember to stop render before you press final render for exporting the render image or videos. So um, this is how we can create for the patch the scarf. So uh, now we will go to the second part, part B, which is uh, how to create sequence. So um, now you can go to files and save your current project file for the scarf uh, with embroidery patch. Uh, of course, you can save as your desktop or whatever uh, the location that you want to save. Um, and then now we need to move on. Please click the library out and double access, uh, double click to assess the part one material folder. And now, uh, previously we uh, we take the embroidered patch folder, but now we need need to click this B sequence. Double click, you will able to see there's four uh, files inside. So uh, as talk about talking about sequence, we will introduce two methods to create sequence. The very first I would like to introduce now, demonstrating now, is to create sequence by top stitch functions. So, but beforehand, we need to prepare a sequence image file, which we need to do it in Photoshop. Although, of course, uh, in the folder, you will able to see this sequence PNG files, which are providing to you already, you can directly use it. But uh, just let me quickly introduce how to make the sequence in Photoshop. So in Photoshop right now, I already created a project, create a file with uh, drew, I already draw, drew the circles uh, in grayish color and then create a little hole to indicating the shapes of the sequence. 
And now uh, we will utilize the brush tool inside Photoshop and to add some shininess uh, like a reflective uh, but reflective theme like uh, when seeing your sequence, single sequence chips. So I recommend you to using some uh, to use uh, some quite um, bearish uh, strokes, bush, uh, bush strokes with a very quite large size. Uh, of course, no hardness, and I, I re especially recommend you to adjust the opacity to 20 or even lower. So you just simply, as the handle indicate here, that I use the brush tool to uh, draw a diagonal lines across the center of this sequence to make it like more um, reflective, shininess look like. So same, I using brush to adjust the value already and just simply draw it, a diagonal line. Uh, if you think, oh, it's not obvious enough, you can always uh, add the multiple strokes to make it more obvious. So now, I, uh, of course, I already elimin uh, eliminating the backgrounds. So this should be transparent of the background. And now you can go uh, under Photoshop, you can save, export it as a PNG. You can quickly export or export as PNG. And of course, because I given already given to you the project file, uh, sorry, the uh, sequence image, so I no longer uh, save it here. Just uh, once you save it, you can always go back to the project file. Uh, so, sorry, go back to Clone. And now, please go to uh, inside the folder, V sequence folder. We now opened uh, our uh, velvet back. C project files, uh, velvet back C project files. Double click. Uh, I just click no, but you, yeah, because it was overwriting it, because you already saved in advance, right? So you just simply click open, click OK. And now we got the uh, pot, uh, velvet porch here with the 2D window indicating the patterns. So uh, now we, we got the sequence for our image and now we can go utilizing top stitch as I, uh, as I mentioned, we can utilize the top stitch too. So please go to object browser, go under the top stitch tab. Now currently there are no top, top stitch added. Uh, with just a uh, single default top stitch appear here. Please click it under the object browser and indicate uh, the, under property edit car, uh, there's uh, some more information about the specification and details about the top stitch of this top stitch. Please go to uh, under type, type being changed to texture, texture. So uh, according to the handouts, so we now change uh, type to texture and then offset we can we adjust to zero and stitch count with just remaining one. For the shapes, we just simply according to the handouts, we just simply as state as custom as it is. And SPI, which is speech, uh, stitch per inch, we go to six temporary according to the um, handouts and keep remaining 40 uh, for the fat thickness. And when you move on, moving on uh, for the material type, now according to the handout, because sequence is mat material type, uh, metal material type would be metal, right? Metal like uh, for the surface. So please now change to metal for the material type. Material type change to metal. And under basic parameters, 
for textures, please, uh, as this is default ones, but now we need to change it to sequence. Same wise, we you can go to on the library using drag and drop using your mouse drag and drop the sequence image file PNG into the texture directly like this, or you can uh, utilize the icons for open file path to locate the sequence image file from Windows. Same wise. So uh, of course you can uh for the this uh for you can adjust the intensity for the normal map or now as according to handout we didn't change any but going down to displacement map same uh we can utilize the sequence uh image file and use it directly for the displacement map so um as i mentioned displacement map is kind of like a monochrome image which using uh, for the light uh, for the um, lighter color parts, which is right to grayish color, it will indicating the pumpiness of the image. So as this case, you can slightly using this image because it's monochrome to as a dis uh, displacement map, and you can adjust slightly, which is just slightly the pumpiness amount. I will suggest according to the hangout would be zero point one. 0 0.1 and its particle distance to 1 because it's so small the size of this sequence is just uh, less than 5 millimeters uh, sorry, sorry 5 cm uh, 5 cm or 1 cm so we would work best to remain the particle distance as small as we can so of course keep continuously continuity on and I don't adjust color here because I want to create the the metalness uh, colors as from it's like silverish. So, but of course you're welcome to add color here, but you will will see it later on when you add top stitch. So now we kind of like uh, customize the. Yeah. Okay. So just uh, make sure the specifications uh, is making um, alignment with the handouts. So now we can go back to the to the window. We can now adding the top stitch onto the porches. But beforehand, since we for the top stitch, we need to add the internal lines in advance. So please now utilizing the internal polygon line tool, you can simply just draw a in this uh, demo, I would draw a diagonal lines, some random corner, and now I use active pattern tool to select this internal line, right click, offset as internal line, offset as internal line. Uh, I will add uh, kind of like a 15 millimeters distance. So for the front parts, I will add around 11 internal lines. And same for these extra internal offset internal lines, I will extend and trim to pattern outlines. So that it will automatically extend those added internal lines until the pattern outline under this porch front. Oh sorry, it's bad. It should be bad. Yeah. Just let me shift my viewpoint towards the this side. So yeah, it's now corresponding. So this is the correct size that I add the internal lines. Okay, so I may also add the extra ones for the reverse directions. This time I just only add one. Same, I'm trim off those extended uh, internal lines out. So now I got 
all the necessary internal lines ready for adding the top stitch. So uh, for adding top stitch, I thought you guys are familiar with which tools you're using because I add just the sim simple um, single uh, lines. So I will use segment top stitch and make sure you are, of course, uh, let me rename it is sequence. So let me still so just for me to distinguish this is not a normal top stitch. This is a sequence top stitch. And I start to by clicking my left mouse button one time, I, I can automatically add the the top stitch. So because you cannot see right now, because I think uh, due to the size of the image settings for the top stitch image, sorry, the sequence image, so I may fine tune adjust. I may need to fine tune for adjustments. Maybe one hundred, even more. Maybe two hundred. Yeah, I need to even more. Four hundred, or even six hundred. Yeah, it makes more sense right now. Okay, 800. So uh, I think whatever is because it's uh, this size is varied by whatever you're using tests or millimeters. For millimeters, this is four millimeters per unit. So just indicating the size of these sequence, single sequence for the thickness is four millimeters. Four millimeters for the thickness. So uh, this it will be depending on which unit you're using uh, for 4 or 40, it vary. So in this case, I use 4 millimeters for fat thickness. Now it seems more reasonable right now for the sequence size as, uh, as a top stitch. So uh, if you would like to uh, check the pumpiness, is, is this realistic enough? You always can go to now uh, on the top bar menu, render, render, open the render window. Again, please press interactive render. And now you should be able to see under the, the render window how these are. Uh, sequence will be look like let me let me zoom it out a little bit so since I added the displacement map for the sequence it will look now a little bit more pumpiness for uh, as it's really at like a sequence um, sticking uh, stitching onto the surface of this patch po porch uh, leather porch So this is how one of the methods that we uh, use to apply use to apply the sequence. Especially, it would be much uh, useful if you want to create certain patterns by sequence. Just like in this case, you want to create a, a diagonal stripe patterns by sequence. So now let's turn into another side. Let me stop the render engine right now and close out the render window. We will focus on to the other parts of the patterns, which is the back sides, back sides, back sides. We will demonstrate another method to create sequence by, according to the handouts, ob object uh, creations. So which means we create a single sequence file by object by an obj so let's go back to clone um but first we need instead of create an image for the sequence now we use a patterns for sequence of course the sequence you can uh, design to different shapes but in this uh, for demonstration we will use the circle so uh to create circle patterns of course, we utilize the pattern tool, ellipse tool, 
ellipse two, ellipse two. So um, according to handouts, we will keep uh, using ellipse two to create uh, the size ten millimeters times ten millimeters for the sequence. We just simply insert diameters under the uh, pop up uh, windows. So then we uh, utilize the internal ellipse tool, internal ellipse tool, to create a hole on the top edge of these uh, sequence patterns. I think the size, uh, as the handle indicates, is two millimeters times two millimeters. So please type in, and then use the transform pattern to select these internal ellipse shapes. Right click, convert to hole, convert to hole. Then you should others will be the hold inside uh, these sequence patterns. So, but uh, in 3D window, let's locate it, these um, patterns. Um, as you see right now, the um, the patterns is quite rough. Uh, it's not as really like a point of shapes. It's because uh, the particle distance, this patterns particle distance is still very large, which is 20. So please change this particle distance to 0 0.8 first to make it more finer edge, like um, more higher resolutions. And then lower its curvature to 70 instead of 100. Okay, so when you rotating the angle, wheel wing angle in 3D window, you will see more, it makes more sense for our <clears throat> a sequence shapes. And I will add extra more, turning that rolling down to additional thickness rendering. Um, I will add a little tiny more thickness, which is 0 0.2, as the handle indicate, to make it a slightly thicker than the previous uh, the default settings. So now. Uh, when we're talking about the uh, pa uh, pattern itself, uh, it's fine, the shape is fine, but the fabric qualities now is currently using the fabric one. You see the blue fonts highlighted. So I would rather, instead of using fabric one, I will right click, assign to new fabric, appoint the selected um, sequence pattern, and I will name this new fabric type for sequence specifically. And now on, I create the shapes of this sequence. So um, I will now move it on to in under 2D window. Since the location right now, I will uh, I will place it. I will place it, move it onto the X and Y intersecting points. I will move these patterns. And then um, in 3D window as well. Right click, reset to the arrangement selected. So uh, for the upper wheel, you will see um, these 3D uh, in 3D window, this sequence away from the center. So I will use the gizmo tool to change the viewing angle. Make sure you are using the number key. I would suggest using five for the top wheel and the number four or number six to get the cor correct, accurate uh, side wheel. You can zoom in and then I will lay in flat using the gizmo blue circles to lay in flat so that uh, for the upper wheel again, you will see this pattern, sorry, this uh, sequence patterns is placing on above the X and Y uh, grids, the X and Y assets, the center of X and Y assets. Same uh, in 2D and 3D window. Okay, so uh, this is in purpose for preparing to export these uh, 
this pattern as an object files, OBJ files. So now let's move to files, right, uh, right, uh, left hand corner, export. Please go to export, OBJ, OBJ. Click OBJ, then please name it first. I think uh, you can name it as sequence. And now you will see the pop-up window called export OBJ. Um, according to the handout, I've already indicated the uh, settings recommended for exporting this OBJ. So please make sure to select all patterns, click all patterns, single object, fake tech, fake, uh, and then ba on the basic scale, you choose a millimeters, and then please make sure to save the with absolute texture image. Okay, so select all patterns, single objects, fix, and millimeters, and save with absolute texture image file path. Click OK. Then uh, you should able to locate the OBJ that create a for sequence, which names are uh, sequence buttons OBJ. So you don't need to save at all, but of course, if you would like, you can um, just like what I did here, you can just do the step that I demonstrate. Then now we will move on to, uh, after to forming these OBJs, we can register these, um, um, these, this sequence as the buttons and sides. So uh, please click, go to 3D window and click button tools. Of course, or you can also uh, click the button tab under object browser and click the default buttons. Click the default buttons. So uh, go down to the property editor. You should able to see the shapes uh, under the shapes row. Um, of course, the default ones is uh, listed here. But um, but now since we have already saved the uh, custom made um, um, sequence buttons as buttons so now these uh, click these add buttons these add buttons this means register the buttons okay so you can name it this time we call it sequence as well um, and then please click these open file path icon to locating back the sequence that you save um, of course, um, now please use back these uh, sequence buttons for uh, 3D object files under the part one materials uh, B sequence folder. Open. And then, of course, you can also add the thumbnail image. I also providing to you through the part one uh, B sequence files. Just crop image uh, from the from the DD window. So you now can register these um, buttons, these buttons as the sequence, the single sequence. But of course you can Adjust its size, uh, but now on is just uh, width uh, for dimension and weight is 10.5 millimeters, 1 cm of uh, thickness is 1 uh, 0.9 mm, uh, weight is 0 0.1. Of course, you can adjust here by uh, the dimension and also the thickness, but uh, it's hints here. I won't no longer uh, adjust anymore, just for demonstrations, I will just simply use um, the current settings for the size. And for the button settings, uh, of course, the material type, uh, this since it is sequence, so I will, of course, I will change the material type to metal. And of course, you can add 
any texture if you have any customized texture um, since it's obj i think the texture things is no longer needed okay um now let's use the because now we're using button two so now you can simply just directly add to the window you can simply randomly by using your left mouse button to click and add the sequence Of course, now if you see in the 3D window, this is the custom buttons that you register as a sequence. Uh, it looks a little big, but since as I mentioned, you can always click this, uh, this button type under the button tab and then adjust its size under property editor. Let's say now I uh, change to 5 millimeters, looks uh, half smaller. And one more thing, uh, you may see that when you close up, there's uh, still a gap in between the fab, uh, the porch surface, the porch back surface and the sequence. It's because of the settings of the collision. So in order to make sure the uh, distance is narrower between the, uh, the Porch fabric surface to uh, uh, and the uh, sequence you can take the collision off and then use the gizmo to uh, this time I use the side wheel so I will use the red arrow to try to stick it a little tighter onto the surface of this porch uh, bags same wise uh, for the the other sequence that I just add I only add two so Click a collision off so that it won't, uh, it will no longer have the distance reserved. It. So of course, in the handouts, I already indicating uh, the specific like this kind of results. Uh, you can register as many as you can uh, using this OBJ method to create a pattern for a single sequence whatever the circle or round shape or other custom shapes like star like other hat shapes you can use it the patent pat, you can create a pattern for the sequence and register as the obj format file and then um, use it as the buttons register as the buttons inside of course you can uh, also copy and then adjust the bigger size big i think it's big and then let's say I change into num uh, x millimeters width with thickness 1 mm. So I register and other buttons, but in a different color. Let's change to another color, like the golden yellow one, maybe. So I can always uh, create different types of uh, sequence as a single sequence chips of course same you need to if you want to uh, make it more realistic you need to uh, click turn off these sequence buttons collision off and then adjust is yeah adjust is distance in between the fabrics service this is how we can um, create the custom sequence. The advantage of this sequence method is you can um, add the multiple different types of custom single sequence and place it the ran in the random way, not as the same as this uh, top stitch way. The top stitch way is more for the patternized um, arrangement for the sequence. But instead of this, uh, you can either mix uh, two ways to create the uh, the ideal designs 